We're counting down the top 10 markets for polyethylene film extrusion based on the latest research from Mastio and Company. I'm Jim Calari, Editorial Director of Plastics Technology Magazine. Joining me today is Kevin Huntsman, President of Mastio and Company. Welcome, Kevin. Jim, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Good to see you again. Uh, before we dig into the specifics of what we're going to talk about today, tell us a little bit about Mastio and Company, the polyethylene film study, and just some general observations that you might have. Great. First off, thank you, Jim. We appreciate the opportunity to discuss the new polyethylene film study that we published in late July of this year. And, and it's amazing how fast time goes as we've been conducting this study for, gosh, over 30 years when Dick Mastio first published this study in the early 90s. So uh, we're very, very honored to be able to continue to collect this data, profile over 30 different markets uh, at an in-depth level with the team here at Mastio. As I mentioned, this being having gone on for so many years, we've been able to refine it. And, and some of the things we've added is what's really different as we think about sustainability, right. Jim. I think back to the beginning of this study that I don't know that that word was in existence. Oh. And if it was, <laughs> yeah, if it was, I didn't know yeah. it. So I've been with Mastio for 27 years. Mastio has been doing this study, as I said, for over 30, and we've been in business for 34 years. So a lot of history, right. uh, a lot of insights that when we do this study, we take what we learned last time. We're also doing studies in between the, the three-year cycle of doing this study. So I'm excited to talk about uh, the first two chapters or the first chapter today when we think about construction film. Now, the interesting thing about your methodology is you go directly to the source. So you're not relying on resin data, you're going to the processors directly as as a key component of your research. It's really primary research, Jim. That's an excellent point. We do. We have a team here led by Kim Inna, and you know Kim. She's been around over 30 years with Mastio and does a spectacular job of leading this study. And there's hundreds, if not really thousands, of telephone calls made to profile these, these individuals within a particular company for their respective markets. Right. Okay, so let's get into the 10th largest market for polyethylene based on your research, and that is construction film. First, if you can give us a definition as to what constitutes construction film based on uh, your research. It's a, it's a good question. I mean, it encompasses many things when you think about construction. We talk about being used in a variety of applications for buildings, homes, miscellaneous type construction product projects to really protect against moisture, wind, chemicals, fumes, dust, debris, mildew, and rot. So many different applications when we look at this, whether it's a drainage barrier wrap or a roof underlayment, window covering. So it, it, it oftentimes our, our markets are fairly broad, but there's a lot of specificity of what those individual products are that constitute that market, spe specifically construction film. Yeah. So what are the, the key technical and material trends in that market? You know, it's, that's a great question. And as we think about this particular market and we look at just from a blown versus cast, I always like to start with that. So we're looking at a nearly 95% blown film market, a little bit of cast, which is, is pretty consistent. Uh, honestly, when we look at it from 2020 to 2023, it just moved just a couple of percent, Jim. So it's very consistent there. When we think about a resin technology piece where linear low density uh, holds about 74%, of this market. Uh, within that, one of the largest polymers within that linear low density family is metallocene. Mm -hmm. uh, so metallocene constituting about 21% of that market piece, then low density, a, a distant second and some high density even further back. And we do include some PCR as well, mm -hmm. Jim, when we're capturing this and uh, when and where that person we're talking to has that, that insight. And that information, we do capture that and include it in this total number. So really linear low density rules the day, if you will, right. when you think about construction film. Right. Mostly a monolayer market? Yes, mostly a monolayer market. And I would, most I, I would imagine it's a market that's obviously very closely tied to the construction industry. So uh, that was going like gangbusters for a while. It's simmered down a little bit now. And that's a great point. And, and really one of the key drivers of that, if we think about it, is interest rates. So I read yesterday that uh, a 30 year fixed mortgage interest rate is running around 8%. So that's very high compared to what most of us have our homes at over the last few years. So those interest rates are, are slowing that down. Now, when you read some of the, the data 
And we do, I think our team does a good job of obviously that primary research, but also bringing in some data just from some secondary resources uh, like the National Home Builders Association and others like that, where they're talking about housing starts increasing in 2024. But obviously that's going to be tied to uh, our good friends at the Fed and what they do with that interest rate and, and if they can indeed provide us with a soft landing. Right. Thanks for the information, Kevin. Uh, please tune in for our next installment of the top 10 polyethylene blown film markets based on the Mastio and company research. We'll be looking at uh, market number nine in our next installment. Thank you, Kevin. Hey, thanks, Jim. Appreciate it, sir.